Hello, my name is Adam Rose. I'm the Product Marketing Manager for Questor Verification IP. Welcome to this webinar on the Mental Graphics Memory Library. First of all, I'd like to give you an overview of Mental Graphics Enterprise Verification Platform and the importance of Verification IP within it. The core of the EVP is a number of fast verification engines that satisfy all your verification needs. These range from virtual prototyping through formal verification, simulation using Questor, emulation on Veloce and FPGA prototyping. These engines have common mechanisms for stimulating your design, for collecting metrics on the tests you have run, uh, for debugging any issues you find and then analyzing the results. This means that you can move tests from one engine to another according to whichever engine is the most appropriate for the verification task in hand. Uh, and, you can and you can continue to use a common debug and analysis environment while you're doing that. Tying all this together is a standards-based verification, verification infrastructure, and key to this is verification IP. Our verification IP makes your life easier by encapsulating detailed knowledge of the protocol. It's based on system Verilog and UVM, and it works on all major simulators. Quest of Verification IP is not just a BFN. Each QVIP includes a test plan that specifies all the testable features of the protocol. It has coverage models that match that test plan, and we provide stimulus that achieves 100% coverage as described in the test plan. The test plan itself is a spreadsheet which is organized with the same chapter headings as the original protocol specification. Since all this is unencrypted, you can look through it and determine for yourself how good a drill we have done. We also produce a complete set of assertions to make sure, sure that your design has not violated the protocol specification. These are produced in the same methodical way as the test plan and the coverage. If an assertion fires, it gives a detailed message which is cross-referenced back to a specific line in the protocol specification. Qubit produces linked transactions at all levels of abstraction. Uh, and these transactions, they're linked together and they can be viewed in Questor Visualizer. And assertions can be debugged in the same way uh, in uh, Questor Visualizer. Before I get onto our new memory library, here's a quick reminder about our interface protocol library. Uh, this is a mature and extensive VIP library that covers a broad range of protocols. It supports 60 protocols or protocol variations across the AMBER, PCI Express, Ethernet, USB, MIPI, Serial, and Display families of protocols. And this is our new memory library. Uh, it provides fast and accurate models of over 1600 memory devices. It supports all commonly used DRAM and flash protocols. So on DRAM, it does LPDDR234, DDR234, WideIO, HMC, HPM. Uh, and it also supports um, the flash protocols, SD, SDIO, the MSC, ONFI, uh, Serial, NAND, NOR, and UFS. Uh, and it also includes leading edge protocols like Hyperbus, uh, which is a new leading edge flash protocol. Together, the protocol and memory libraries mean that the Questor VIP library provides a complete solution for all your ASIC and FPGA verification needs. Our memory models are delivered to you as a simple Verilog module. They're simply dropped into your test bench and connected up to your DUT. There's no need for a complicated UVM test bench to use our memory, pro our memory models, uh, although of course they are designed to work in a UVM environment. In addition to the basic functionality, our memory models provide assertions, functional coverage, test plan, uh, uh, sorry, uh, transaction logging ca capabilities, all of which can be turned on and off as required. Our memory models have a very simple parameter-based configuration mechanism, which I'll talk about in more detail later. In addition to the memory models, we provide memory protocol monitors and memory controller agents for all the memory protocols in the memory library. The monitors can be used to check the behavior on the bus in, a, in, in an existing test bench. And also if you want to, you can connect them up to a UVM scoreboard. 
The controller agents can used to be verify can use can be used to verify memories. They can also be used to help verify a phi, or they can be used just to help get a test bench up and running before the full memory controller RTL is available. Here's a quick list of the basic features of our memory models. So uh, configuration can be done by part number. Uh, we can also do custom configuration for what if analysis or to vary for slightly from the manufacturer's configuration. For example, sometimes people want to be a little more conservative than the manufacturer's specification. Uh, our memory models include protocol checking, coverage and trans transaction logging, as I've talked about. And all our memories, all our memory models have backdoor APIs for loading images or checking results. This can be done for the whole memory uh, using a file, or if you want to interact with particular parts of the memory, you can do it procedurally. Uh, and where appropriate, we can also bypass the length of the initialization sequences uh, so that you can run your tests more quickly. So there are three ways to configure our memory models. Uh, the first is the most common, that's, uh, that is you simply specify a memory manufacturer's part number and use the manufacturer's configuration out of the box. You can, uh, you can, do, you can specify the parameters in the code itself, uh, but you can also change from uh, one model to another um, just by varying the parameters uh, on the command line. The second way you can configure our memory models is to generate a custom configuration file. Uh, you would do this using our memory configurator software. Uh, so you use the software and that would produce a file which you then use to configure the memory model. The third way you can configure our memory models is to use on the fly configuration. So this allows you to change the configuration of the memory during simulation. Uh, this represents an unlikely physical scenario. You don't often swap uh, memories on the board itself as it's running. Uh, but um, this does allow you to reduce the time per test in, in some circumstances, which can be an important consideration. So here's our memory configurator software. Uh, the normal use is very simple. You select the memory type, uh, you select the manufacturer, uh, and then you select the part number. And then you press a button and it outputs a single file with everything you need to integrate our memory model into your test bench. For many applications, the out-of-the-box device model is fine, but uh, if you want to vary any of the values uh, in the configuration, you can change them and output a custom configuration file, which is then used to configure the module, to, to configure the memory model. Our memory models can be configured to produce a log file. Uh, this is a text file that looks very similar to the output you might see in a hardware debugger. It gives transactions start and end times. It provides the command type uh, and then all the details of the transaction. And this can be very useful if you're, uh, uh, if you're doing some debug work. You can also turn the functional coverage monitoring on or off. The functional coverage refers back to the test plan and the test plan in, in, return, in turn refers back to the original protocol specification. This allows you to de determine how effective your verification strategy is. You might have a 100% coverage, in which case everything's fine. Or, or it might be that you don't achieve 100% coverage, but the coverage holes are there because your device doesn't support some particular modes of operation, in which case that's also fine. Or it may be that you have got an unexpected hole in your verification plan and really what you need to do is add an extra test uh, to fill that unexpected hole. So this is an example of the output from Memory Configurator. This file provides everything needed to do the integration of our uh, memory model into your test bench. So at the top of the file, there's a list of parameters that define the behavior of this model. Uh, then there's a list of all the wires needed to connect up to the model. Uh, and finally, we show how to parameterize the model and to instantiate it. So this file is intended to be used as a guide. You may want to copy and paste 
um, some of the code here um, in order to do the integration of our mem memory model into your test bench. So we support over, for DDR, we support over 1600 different DDR devices for DDR2, 3, and 4, and for low power DDR2, 3, and 4. Uh, and we support many bif different bit widths. Uh, and we provide different pinout modules for the different memory types, which can then be configured um, as I just, as I was describing earlier. We also have complete support for the DFI interface. This can be used for standalone for file verification. That's probably how it's used most often. So that's the uh, diagram at the top of this slide. Uh, it can also be used for verifying a memory controller uh, that doesn't have a file. Uh, so that's what's shown in the second diagram down. Uh, in this case, uh, the Quest of Verification IP supplies a slave memory model. Uh, and this memory model, while it's configurable, it doesn't model any particular device, but um, it can be very useful if you're designing or using memory controller IP that can be used with many different files. And finally, if you have a DFI memory controller, one or more files from different sources, uh, you can put a monitor on the DFI interfi interface to identify bugs in your file integration. We will also support the various DIMMs, uh, unbuffered, registered, load reduced. Uh, these will be formally released in a couple of months' time, but if you need a particular DIM model now, please let us know when we can provide you with the model you need. Uh, in contrast, perhaps, to other solutions, we do we model DIMs using a single BFM instance. This means that our solution is very efficient, uh, even, even while being able to model all the buffering and timing effects of the various different DIMs. We support a range of flash memory models. We support the low speed and low capacity vanilla secure digital, as well as the high speed, high capacity, high density SD, and also the UHS-2 devices. We also support a range of manufacturer parts and custom configurations for EMMC. Uh, and for OMFI, we support the common manufacturer devices. So here's a statement from Jackson Twang, who is Vice President of Segment and Ecosystem Marketing at Cypress Semiconductors. Uh, in a recent press release, he said, we're excited about Mental Graphics' release of its extensive memory verification IP model library, uh, in particular its support for the new Hyperbus interface. So in summary, we have a comprehensive memory library that supports the commonly used memory types and we also support leading edge memory protocols. In common with the rest of the QVIP library, the memory library is architected for ease of use. We have the memory configurator software to make configuring and integrating the memory models very easy. There are many ways to change the configuration, either by changing the parameters or by doing it on the fly during the simulation. Uh, and our memory library supports advanced verification capabilities such as assertions for protocol checking, transaction logging, and functional coverage. So thank you. I hope you have all enjoyed this presentation. <laughs>